bring your shame, bring your guilt, and bring your pain. Don't you know that's not your name? You will always be much more than me. Every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right. But that's all right, cause I hear a voice and he calls me a redeemer. When others say I'll never be enough, and greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world, in the world.
Why don't you say hi to somebody next to you and then you can be seated. Last weekend, JJ kicked off this new summer series that, that we're calling the Fundamental List. And inside this series, uh, we want to take a look at some things that we as a church are convinced that are the fundamentals of Christian faith. Last week, if you missed it, you can go online and listen. Um, JJ talked to us about who, who God is. I mean, who, who is he? And this week, we're going to just kind of look at and hopefully wrestle with this question, how does God speak to us? Because as a church, as a group of church leaders, we believe that throughout history that God has demonstrated again and again his desire to communicate with us. And the reason we believe that is we find all kinds of examples recorded in Scripture. You can go back to the Old Testament and you have example after example of God speaking to people. And then in the New Testament, God's desire to speak directly to us becomes even more evident as noted in the Gospel of John. If you have your Bibles or electronic device, you can look at this. If not, you can look at the screen. In John, the first chapter, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If we skip down to verse 14, it says, The Word, talking about Jesus, became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. There is a, a paraphrase of the Bible called the message paraphrase, and I, I look at the message paraphrase a ton. I just like how it's worded. It says this about verse 14. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. The, the embodiment of God in the, in the person of Jesus was God's ultimate expression of his desire to communicate with humankind, to, to communicate to us and with us in a way that we could actually grasp. And you can see plainly in these passages of Scripture that when, when the writer refers to the Word, he's not talking about the Bible as we know it. When he refers to this, the Word, he, he means Jesus. And in, in the Greek worldview, the Word or Jesus was thought to be a bridge between God and man. It was in and through the person of Jesus that you and I were enabled to see what God was like and to see what God likes. The communication line was now open. No one had to any longer go through a high priest or a prophet to communicate with God, to hear God's voice. And if that wasn't enough for you and I, Jesus tells us that God's also sending His Holy Spirit as recorded in John's Gospel, he says this, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So as you can see, when you choose to say yes to Jesus, when you choose to make Him your Savior and your Lord, it enables you to stand rightly connected to God. It enables you to begin a relationship with God. And central to growing in our relationship with God is the same thing that's central in you and I growing in our relationship with anyone. It's communication. So we're forced to look at this question then, how does God speak to us? How does God communicate to us? Is it some weird, spooky, spiritual thing? What does it look like? What does it sound like? You know, it's probably obvious to most of us that God would speak to us in times of prayer. I mean, it, that just seems blindly obvious. Like, okay, yeah, God would speak to us in times of prayer. But here's the deal. If, if you're anything like me, I find my prayer life more often than not being me talking to God versus me listening for God. If I'm going to be honest, nine out of ten prayers every week are probably, hey, God, I need this. Hey, God, I, I want this. Hey, God, what you should do here is this. Hey, God, what you should have done over there is this. And maybe like me, your prayer life is more about request and asking, but God wants it to be equally about listening. So it's obvious that prayer would be a way we could communicate to God and we could hear back from God. 
Another obvious way that God would speak to us is through the scriptures. But once again, I think a lot of times what happens to believers and Christ followers is we know the importance of reading the word of God. We know the importance of reading scripture. So a lot of times we'll have these daily devotions and and our goal is just to rush through them. Several years ago, Becky started doing this devotional book, and it was like, it'd probably take five or six minutes to work through the devotion. And uh, after a couple of weeks went by, I was just in one of those moods where you just got to brag about what you're doing. And we were eating dinner, and I'm like, Becky, I have done my devotion every morning this week. I go, you know what I love most about it? And Becky goes, oh, probably, you know, two days ago when it talked about this and she's like giving me this dissertation about this revelation she had a couple days ago. And I went, no, what I like about it is in five minutes I can get through it. And she's like, really? That, that's like you're happy. Your goal and devotion is to get through it. I mean, it's obvious to me. It's probably obvious to you that God would speak to us through Scripture. But so oftentimes we just treat Scripture as just some literature that we read or devotion that we try to check off for the day. But God wants us to not just read it, but to study it, to to absorb it, to meditate on it. And those two methods, they're consistent. Like like for me anyway, and probably most of you, those two methods are a consistent way that God would speak to his people through prayer and, and through reading and meditating on scripture. But what I've found is that God communicates in tons of other ways as well. I mean, there are many different ways. And what's crazy about these other ways is it seems like, for me anyway, every time I notice one of these other ways that God communicates and I like start looking for it more and more, it seems like he changes it up. And then there's this new method or this new way that appears. For me personally, I'm fascinated how diverse God is. I mean, he can communicate in all these different ways. For me, and I, I'm hoping that it will help you. One of the ways I've noticed that God taps me on the shoulder, if you will, is through his creation. I want you to look at this passage of scripture found in the Old Testament in the Psalms. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world, and the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. Because God created the universe, it makes perfect sense that by observing his work that we could learn a lot about him. God speaks to me and maybe you in the natural world. He speaks to me through magnificent sunsets through star-filled night skies. He speaks to me when I stand in the sand by the ocean and I watch the waves and listen to them crash on the shore. See, a design as magnificent as creation leads me to believe in a grander design. It allows me to see and to sense God's fingerprints on this universe. Last year, for the first time in over 30 years of this thing called ministry, I, I took a sabbatical. And one of the places I went was the White House Retreat Center. It's a Jesuit retreat center here in St. Louis County. And the grounds, I don't know, there's probably maybe 75 to 100 acres. And they are just so well manicured. It's right on the river. You can sit on a, a bluff and you can watch the, the steamboats come by, the paddle boats. You can watch the trains come by. The trees, the sunsets were magnificent. The leaves were incredible. And as I sat there three or four mornings in a row and watched the sunrise, and at night watched the sunset, I was reminded of something. It was as if God was tapping me on the shoulder saying, hey, I'm here. I'm here. There there was this overwhelming sense of his presence in my life. And and here's what's crazy. Um, During my sabbatical, I entered into it with a lot of questions. A lot of questions about my future, a lot of questions about things going on in our family, um, a lot of hurt, a lot lot of angst. And, And watching and looking at God's creation for those four or five days, it made me sense his presence. And you know what? When I left, I didn't have all the answers I wanted. 
but, but whatever happened as I sensed God's presence, it, it, maybe it wasn't okay, but it was tolerable that I didn't have the answers, if that makes sense. I wasn't as troubled that I didn't have some of the answers because as I looked at nature, I was reminded God's there. It just over and over, every morning and every evening, I felt like God saying, hey, I am with you. I'm going before you. I'm going with you. I'll be there after you. I'm with you. And by the end of that sabbatical, I came to grips with, you know what? It's okay that some of my questions aren't going to be answered on this side of eternity. It's okay. Because God, I can trust you. I see in your creation how magnificent you are and how powerful you are and how beautiful you are. And so, God, I'm just going to choose to trust you. God, it's not always going to be easy, and I'm going to get frustrated, and I'm going to get angry, but God, I'm going to do my best to trust you because in your creation, I can't deny you. I can't deny that you're not here, that you're not present, that, that, that you didn't do this. This could not happen without you. Another way I found for me that I feel like God taps on my shoulder and tries to communicate with me is through people. And we see example after example of this recorded in Scripture. And I believe God still uses this method this way today. This is one of the reasons why it's so vital to be a part of a church or a small group so you can connect with other Christ followers who are mutually dependent on hearing God's voice. Because often as we talk and pray with other Christians, God uses their very words to, to help us handle a situation, to, to give us advice on how to move forward or move away or how to stop. A seeking Christian counsel is a wise way to hear God's voice. Look what the writer of Proverbs tells us in Proverbs 15. He said, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. With many advisors, with many people who are seeking God, they succeed. God speaks to us through other people. What's crazy for me is what I found is it's not just other church people. It's not just other Christ followers that God speaks to me through. Oftentimes, it's through someone else. Oftentimes, it's through a complete stranger. A, a couple weeks ago, somebody in the church came by, and they, they dropped some food off for the backpack program that we do at, at Pattonville School District. And uh, I called the school, and they're like, man, we have so much food because of what you guys have done through the school year and some companies that, that we have enough for our summer programs, and, and, and we're stocked up. And so I called the person and said, hey, you have this food, um, and if you're okay with it, uh, we're, we're going to do something different with it. And so I had this crazy idea, and I looked at JJ and said, hey, man, this afternoon I'm going to load this up, and, and I'm just going to drive around Hazelwood and Bridgeton and just everywhere in between. We started in Bridgeton. We're here in Hazelwood. I'm just going to kind of do this circle and, and, and just kind of, you know, try to, hear a nudge from God, if you will. Nothing crazy, spooky, spiritual. Just, just hear a nudge from God. And I was in one location, and I saw this lady, and I have observed her every day for probably about a month, being in this location early in the morning when I leave the house around 5 or 5.15. I would see her car. And so I, I came to this conclusion that she must be homeless, and so I stopped at that location, and I saw her, and I went inside the convenience store she was close to, and I bought a couple bottles of water, and I came out, and I set one of them down, and I said, hey, I just, I wanted to give this to you. And, and she looked at me very, very confused. Um, I could tell she wasn't super comfortable that I was there, and I said, hey, if you're uncomfortable, man, just say, dude, you're weird, get away, and I'll get away. But don't call the police, just ask me to leave, and I'll leave, okay? You know, and everything's cool, but she was like, oh, no, a little curiosity there. And, and I said, my name's Russ, and, and I've just, I've, I've seen you here almost every morning for the past, gosh, close to a month, and I live close to here, and I travel this road six, seven days a week, and uh, I noticed you were always getting out of your car this time in the morning. And, and she said, and let me guess, you think I'm homeless. And I went, no, no, I never said that. 
And as soon as I said, no, I never said that, I'm like, am I going to sit here and just bullface lie to this lady? She just called me. That's why I stopped. And I go, you know what? Can I back up? Like, can I have a, a mulligan here? Can I do a redo? Yes, I assumed that you were homeless and I've got some connections with a ministry here that works with, with ladies and children. And I just wanted to know um, if you needed a place to stay that, that's, and if you needed something to eat. And she said no. And she began to talk and tell me kind of her story and uh, show me that she was far from being homeless. And the reason she was there had nothing to do with that. It was just something else that, that she was doing. And midway in the conversation, she said to me, um, but Russ, thank you for stopping by. And then, ironically, she used my last name in a sentence. And I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I never said my last name to her. And as I stood up and we were starting to part ways there and she shook my hand and said my name, she said, you used to work at a church in Maryland Heights, didn't you? And I said, yeah. And she's like, yeah, I used to go there. And we began to have this conversation. And I sat back down, and she said some really, really encouraging things to me, um, some things that I needed to hear. And I remember getting in the car and driving away. And I, next day, I told JJ and Kevin what happened. And I've told Becky that evening, and I'm like, this encounter was so encouraging to me. God used this lady to speak some things into my, somebody that I didn't know. She knew me because of the church we were at. And, and the things she said, I, I desperately needed at that moment to hear. God speaks to you and I through people. And what's cool is he uses us to speak to people. Another way I found God tapping on my shoulder, if you will, trying to get my attention and communicate to me is through his Holy Spirit. One of the verses that we looked at at the beginning of the message in John said this, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, and I love this part, will remind you of everything I have said. Will remind you of everything I have said. If someone says something about you or comes against you, if we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, it tells us in Scripture that He will remind us of everything that God has said. He will remind us how to act. He will remind us how to react. He'll lead us and He'll guide us. That day when I stopped, I believe I was nudged by the Holy Spirit to stop. It, it's crazy how sometimes we make that whole thing with the Holy Spirit some weird, spooky, goofy deal when it's not. It's just, just God tapping on our shoulder going, I want to communicate with you. I want to be a part of your everyday life. We should be sensitive for that, for that tapping. Uh, when my phone rings during the day, uh, just like you, I have caller ID, and based on what that caller ID says is based on whether or not I answer the phone. And it's true for most of us, right? I mean, most of us, we look down at the caller ID and we see who it is. Um, in my phone, because it does stuff alphabetically, I, I wanted my wife to be the number one contact in my phone. So in my phone, her phone is listed as A.A. A. Beck because I wanted her, no matter who else I have had in my phone, if their name started with an A, I had to make sure that Becky's was the first one in there. And during the day when my phone rings and I glance down at it, no matter what time it is, no matter what I'm doing, if it says A, A, Beck, you know what happens? I silence it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it only happened once. It's, and it'll never happen again. I've got a bruise to prove it. So uh, I answer it because I want to know what she's saying. It's just, it's just natural. If we're doing something, if I'm doing something with one of my boys, or if I'm doing something here at the church with JJ or Kevin, or with my son's company and my phone is laying down and somebody sees AA back when it's ringing, they immediately bring me my phone and go, hey, Russ, here you go. 
because I want to communicate with her. That's how we should listen for the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's not weird. It's not spooky. So, so the big question for you and I in our everyday lives as we go about life and do the things we need to do is are we listening for the voice of God? I, I have this thing I do with our grandson, and I started it before he was even a year old, and I do it every single time, every single visit. Becky knows I start off every single visit with this, and I end every single visit with this. And what you have to realize about this little guy, he's two now. He's in what some call the terrible twos. We're trying to call him the terrific twos. It's not working. But, you know, hey, it seems positive. See, what you have to realize about him is he's two right now. He's a ball of energy, a force of nature. So the way I start and end every visit, it doesn't matter if the visit's going to be just a few minutes, if the visit's going to be a few hours, if the visit's going to be he's staying for the weekend, Every visit starts and it ends with him coming over and he gets a hug and then I put my hands around my mouth and I cup him and I say, Rhett, Rhett, come over here for a second. And, and he leans in with his little ear and puts it right up against my mouth. And then I say, hey, I got to tell you something. And he nods his head. He wants to hear. And I say, Papa loves you so and for the first few times, it would just be a nod or a snuggle in. What's the best is the times when he says, Papa, I love you too. Every visit, it starts that way. And it ends that way. And there's a reason. There's a reason I do that. Because see, I know something about this young man. He's a lot like his daddy, who was my son. And I know that his daddy, who's my son, is a lot like me. And I know if we spend more than 30 seconds together, at some point in that visit, especially since he's two years old, but especially since he's related to me, somewhere in that visit, whether it's a few minutes or a few hours or the whole week, and at some point, there's going to be something that he does that he shouldn't do. There's going to be something that he gets into that he's not supposed to get into. There's going to be something that he starts to do that will cause him harm. At some point, he's going to be upset because he didn't get his way. At some point, he's going to be mean and not want to share. At some point, I'm going to have to correct him and redirect him, and it's going to be for his good, but he won't be able to understand it in the moment. But if he knows that I love him, and if he knows my voice, the chances of him trusting me and accepting or surrendering to my will and my guidance they're greatly increased because if he knows I love him, he's going to listen to my voice and he's going to form a trust. He'll ultimately listen for Papa's voice. God proved to you and to me that he wants a relationship with us, that he wants to communicate with us. He proved that by sending Jesus. Remember our scripture? He sent Jesus the word to become flesh and Jesus moved into the neighborhood. He made his dwelling among us. He came from the Father full of grace and full of truth and full of love. He proved he loved us. Proved he wanted to communicate to us. And then when God allowed Jesus, his one and only son, to die on the cross for our sins, it was like the final proof of love that he would give a life for us. The question for us is, are we listening for his voice? Many preachers and teachers and evangelists and church leaders, we, we've made this hearing from God thing spooky. We, we, we've made it like weird. And the truth is it's so opposite of that. It's so normal and so natural for God to want to speak to a Christ follower. It just, it, it, in some circles, we make it still sound like God only speaks to a pastor or, or a prophet, or a priest, or some leader. And Jesus himself assured us that God wants to speak to everyone, everyone who chooses to follow him. And hearing from God for a Christ follower should just be, be natural. On Friday night, we picked our grandson up for the weekend, 
And we were driving back from my son's farm and we were on Highway 44. And, and I'm just going to be honest so you can just hate me later. I'm in the car and we're driving with our grandson and I was doing 76 miles per hour. There's no reason, no reason to do 76 miles per hour, especially with my grandson in the car. And I, I was aware that I was going 76. And the reason I was aware is because that's where I set the cruise control, okay? So we're cruising down highway, 76 miles per hour. And all of a sudden, and I always think like I, I have a good eye, like I can keep my head on a swivel. I'll watch my six, man. I, I, I can see what's going on. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I see a man who's sworn to protect and serve. And he's got pretty lights on his car. And he's coming back. I mean, he's coming for me. He's doing 85, 90. I'm picturing this, you know, just squared away, brand new state trooper, excited. We're going to get this guy. I'm like, oh, man, Becky, he's got it. And immediately, it didn't take me a split second to tap the brakes. It's more than a tap, actually. It was kind of a screech. I'm like, I'm going to slow down. And Becky went, why? So he can catch you quicker. You know, it's too late, sucker. And I'm like, I'm just going to slow down. It's just natural to slow down, to pull over to the, the, the far right lane, right? It, it just happened. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm pulling over. And Be Becky's in the back. I can see her in the rearview mirror just shaking her head. Because she had told me 17 times before that happened, well, slow down. Why are you going so fast? Our grandson's with us. Why do you got to drive like this? Oh, man. And he gets right up on us and then switches lanes and just guns it and passes us. And I did what most of you do. Oh, God, thank you. <laughs> Resume cruise. Ah! First time in our life we've had a car that's even had cruise control, much less one that you can hit the button and it goes back to the speed you're going. I'm like, home free. That guy up there is getting a ticket. He must have been doing 90. What an idiot. You know, and I'm, I'm just, I'm dry. And Becky's like, are you serious? But it, it, it came so natural to, to what I should do. When you and I are driving down a road and the light is green and it turns to yellow, what comes naturally? For some of you, if you're going to be honest, floor it, right? That comes that You're like, hey, get through it, right? But it, it, what should come, okay, start to use caution turns red, we just know. If you've been driving more than two days, you know it's just natural. You, you, just, you just stop. You and I should have this thing about us as Christ followers that we are just, we're just naturally listening for God's voice. We're looking for the Holy Spirit's direction in our life. It's not weird. Nobody on the highway, when I slowed down, you know what? Nobody on the highway that was next to me or traveling by me went, oh, I wonder why that guy's slowing down. That's weird. No, they were all like, he's slowing down because there's a state trooper back there about to get him. It was just natural. What if you and I lived in a fashion in our Christianity, in our journey of faith, that we listened for God like that and that, that we just didn't think it was, was weird? We didn't think it was spooky spiritual. We didn't, we didn't think anything about it. We just went, you know what? I feel like God's leading and directing me to do this. Or I feel like God's leading and directing me to, to say this. I didn't have to say to Becky, hey, Becky, I just want you to know the reason I'm slowing down so fast is there's a trooper back there. He's going to get us. She didn't have to ask me. I didn't have to make it some kind of weird deal. And you and I, when we hear the voice of God, we don't have to make it some, it, it's, it's not weird. It should just be natural for a Christ follower. Just, just absolutely, hey, I feel like God's speaking to me. We don't even have to tell the other person. If you're anything like me, I'll get these nudges sometime to, to send someone a text or, or to call someone or to send someone an email and just say, hey, man, I, I, you know, I, I just I was thinking about you, and I think that you know that God put you on my mind, and, and, and I wanted to reach out, and I'm thinking, why, why can't we just reach out? We don't have to do the whole, the Lord spoke to me, make a phone call to you. That's when people go, you are weird, right? It's like, no, don't do that. It's just like, hey, I had a few more boxes of food left the other day. 
and I was on Lindbergh, and there was a, a, a young guy standing at the corner, and he, I didn't need a sign from God because he had a sign that said, I'm hungry, okay? And I had some food left over, and I pulled over to the side of the road, and I said, hey, man, I got some food back here, and if you like it, you're more than welcome to it. And I gave him the food, and he said, thank you very much. And then we had this short five-minute discussion, and I didn't feel the need to say, you know, I think the Lord told me to stop here. It was, you know, it was, and as I went to pull away, he went, I just want you to know, this is the first time I've ever done this in my life. I lost my job a couple months ago, and my wife left, and, and, I, and, and, and this is my friend that's with me here, and, and this is going on, and this is going on, and just kind of started spilling the beans about everything that was going on. And, and he has a background in the construction, in the, in the trades. And, and, and most of you know that I, I work another job with, with one of my sons who has a company. And I said, hey, I, I just happen to have a connection. If, if you would like some work so you don't have to do this, I, I can give you a connection. Yes, please. And I give him the number and say, hey, now, you know, you need to take some steps and do this. And as I'm driving away, he goes, hey, sir, can I tell you something? And I go, yeah. And he goes, it's like, it's as if God sent you. And I went, maybe he did. And I drove off. I, I think God did. But I didn't have to weird it out, right? If you and I could just listen and be sensitive, I think God's leading us and guiding us and directing us in hundreds of ways every day. And maybe we just start listening for it and just intuitively just start following. Hey, I feel like God's saying that. I'm going to do that. Hey, I feel like God's leading me here. I'm going to do it. And, and guess what? In doing this, you know what happens sometimes? Sometimes we, we think that God said to do something or say something, and, and, and then it, like, it just doesn't pan out. A few months ago, Becky and I were at the grocery store, and I said, Beck, I feel like God's tugging on my heart to pay for this, this couple behind me. It was an elderly couple. I, I see them back here counting their money. I feel like God's leading us to, to pay for their, for their groceries. And Becky went, well, why, why are you talking to me? Then let's just do it. And I turned around and said, hey, man, if you guys don't mind, we just like to, to bless you and, and pay for your groceries. And the guy looked at me, and he went, why? I, I, I don't know. And he goes, son. I want to tell you something. And I'm like, it, when it starts out, son, I got to tell you something. You, just, you know what you need to say, especially to one of your elders. If they start out with, son, I need to tell you something, just apologize. And say, you know what? You don't Just save the words. I, I was wrong. He goes, son, I could buy this whole store. I retired five years ago. And my wife and I, over the course of our life, made over $12 million. And he's giving me his whole, he's talk, talking to me about his portfolio. And my mind starts moving. I'm thinking, maybe the Lord told me to ask you to pay for my groceries. I don't know, you know. <laughs> right? I, oh, hold up. It's coming in now. Uh, yeah, I, I said that wrong. What God wanted to say to you is that you pay for mine. And I went, I go, man, I'm sorry. I go, I, uh, I just, I had this inkling, I thought, from, from God. And he said, or did you see me open up my change purse and I was counting out my change? Now, well, that too. And he goes, well, that's okay. You know, he goes, at least you tried. And then as we were bagging up our groceries, starting to go away, he walked through the line. He goes, what are you, some kind of preacher? And I went, no, heavens, no, no, no. Yes, First Baptist right around the corner. Um, I was like, I, I go, yeah. And he, go, he, he said, you know what? He goes, sometimes when you're trying to follow Jesus and follow that voice. Sometimes it's just, you know, it was just you. And he said, sorry for razzing you. I want to thank you for your kindness. And, and, you know, and we went on. And we got to the car, and I went, Becky, I feel so stupid. And she went, why? And I went, because, you know, like, do you see what happened? Were you not there? And she went, so you, you felt like God might have been saying something, so you were trying to be kind and you feel stupid. And I went, yeah. And she goes, no, you know what you feel? You feel humiliated. And maybe that whole transaction needed to happen because maybe God was trying to humble your butt. She said, butt. 
Yeah, humble your butt. I'm like, okay, maybe so. When you're listening for God, sometimes you might think you hear something and it comes out, oh, it wasn't. But were you trying to be kind? Listen, God loves you. And I don't think you and I can even begin to imagine how much he loves us. Comprehending a being outside of space and time, it's only the beginning of this ocean of depth of God's power, his complexity, his perfection, yet he loves us. I want to ask you to stand with me today as we wrap up. And I want to give you a a benediction. I want to challenge you to, to receive this. Trust in God. Talk to him in prayer. Meditate on scripture. Stretch out your thoughts to comprehend his communications. Strive daily to connect to him. Past all the selfishness and self-seeking ways, strive to walk the journey with the Father day in and day out until your very last day. Listen for his still, small voice. May we all be found faithful before Christ Jesus on that last day. Amen. You may be seated. I want to challenge you for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week. Listen for God's voice. I believe he speaks to us multiple times every day. And our job's to listen. And it's not weird. And it's not spooky. And we don't have to make it that way. But what a difference that you and I could make in the world if we just listen for his voice and then try to obey it. Uh, let me pray for you real quick and, and we can be dismissed. God, thank you uh, so much for this place um, called Simple Church. Thank you for people here who, my goodness, God, they love people. And by loving people, they're loving on you. God, I pray that we would continue to be a church of people that see you and your image in every single human being. Even if they don't look like us, talk like us, believe like us, God, I thank you that when we see another human being, we see an image bearer of your son. And God, I thank you that we treat them as such. God, I pray that as we go from this place today that we will listen for your voice. We'll listen to your voice. We'll step out. God, use us not only to be your hands and feet, but use us to be your mouthpiece in this crazy world that we live in. Use us to just love on people in a way that makes you so proud. God, thank you for not just being our Savior, but thank you for being our loving God who's head over heels in love with us. As we go from this place today, God, we commit to going in your name and being an example that would make you proud. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. God bless you guys. Hope to see you next weekend.